we learn geology because we believe that something, if something happened uh, in the past, uh, the same processes can happen now mm -hmm. in the uh, current times and in the future. The biggest challenge now uh, is like we are not a software startup. Uh, we, we, we will create the online, uh, online courses, uh, online uh, workshops, mm -hmm. but it won't be the core of our business. Our core business is to be present physically. Hi and welcome. These are the startup stories where we talk about startups and what makes them work. I'm your host Szymon Adamus and today we meet with Przemek Krawczyk from GeoLearning, educational and geological workshops for children and teenagers. Hi Przemek. Hi Szymon, hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> great to meet you and great to have you here. Uh, can you tell us more about GeoLearning? Yeah, maybe some history. Sure. in the beginning. Uh, it all started in 2017. I was a student, a geology student, ge geology faculty at the University of Warsaw. And I was attending uh, an event in Chęciny. Chęciny is a village in the center of the uh, Holy Cross Mountains uh, in Poland. So you have to know that uh, geologically speaking, Chęciny and Holy Cross Mountains are very important for geologists uh, from all over the world because uh, luckily uh, the rocks from uh, all of geological history can be found there uh, and the University of Warsaw founded the uh, uh, Center for uh, Geological Education in Chęciny. Uh, mm. This is a place where students uh, uh, prepare for their uh, geological uh, future work and um, science uh, and uh, I was a student uh, this geological center had a, a open day uh, so every ca ev everyone uh, not only geology students or professors could attend and take part in workshops uh, visit this place uh, so uh, the director asked me if I can uh, prepare some workshops for kids because he knew that I was working with uh, children and kids and teenagers previously. Uh, so, so I did. <laughs> and uh, it was an idea in my mind, uh, what if uh, we could organize such workshops, such uh, field trips uh, for students from all over Poland and, and not only Poland. Uh, so I started geolearning. Mm, as I said, I was a student, so I was completely out of money. Uh, we can say that uh, we bootstrapped this startup <laughs> uh, with uh, a couple hundred zwot uh, in my pocket. Uh, so uh, first uh, I learned how to create um, a simple website uh, on WordPress. Uh, <laughs> so I did it uh, on the weekend. Uh, uh, I paid for hosting, uh, then a couple of months, I suppose, uh, creating uh, uh, programs for trips, uh, looking for some partners uh, to organize food for participants or the transport, etc, etc. And uh, I was doing this uh, during my uh, studies, so I had to pass my exams and prepare my uh, engineer's uh, te thesis. Uh, so it was quite tough uh, mm -hmm. joining those activities together. But after a couple of months, I found uh, one uh, teacher, geography teacher, who was interested in uh, participating on that trip, uh, Kasia. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was Kasia from Warsaw, so cheers, uh, Kasia, to you, uh, my first client. And uh, yeah, and I organized the first one. And then, you know, like the, maybe not like the avalanche, but uh, it's like uh, this uh, simplest marketing. So one client who's uh, mm. happy and enjoyed my trip uh, told that uh, to their friends, uh, other uh, teachers so they called me and uh, this is going on uh, until until today okay okay for how long now uh, 2017 so six years nice. in april <laughs> nice nice uh, did you have any problems during the covid lockdowns 
Yes, it was one big problem <laughs> because <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, my trips are field trips. So we have to be physically there and sure. uh, we need people to attend uh, with their bodies and minds, not online. So when the Polish schools uh, were closed during the pandemic, um, we were completely uh, cut at, uh, out of mm. uh, clients, out of cash and uh, nearly um, 18 months, uh, we didn't organize any uh, yeah. trip. We tried to uh, reach uh, our clients online, so we uh, organized online uh, workshops, but the problem was uh, the Polish uh, scholar system, Polish teachers weren't prepared for mm. going online. So they had a really big amount of troubles uh, doing that. So it was like their last idea to make something extra because yeah. they couldn't uh, teach uh, online. Yeah. So sure so it was tough um, unfortunately uh, we uh, have we hadn't uh, any uh, you know uh, backup uh, or additional money or i don't know uh, any help uh, from mm -hmm. our government because uh, we uh, technically speaking we are in the field of business it's called non-formal education so um, no help was dedicated to this field, to this area. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, I don't know, maybe restaurants or maybe uh, big companies or artists, uh, you know, obtained this, uh, uh, this money from, uh, from public funds, we yeah. didn't uh, have any. It wasn't uh, as important as <laughs> uh, according to them. Yes, and yes, it wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. Uh, I was, I was actually going to ask you about that later, but uh, that's the perfect moment, so I'm not going to wait. Uh, is there a big difference between online and real world le learning when you try to, you know, uh, learn and uh, make? passionate, uh, make children passionate about some uh, educational topic? Mm -hmm. I would split learning into three fields. The school field, when they are technically in school attending the lessons, this is the first field. Mm -hmm. Second field is uh, when they go, go out, uh, for example, in our uh, life science trips, uh, attending the um, uh, attending the mountains, for example, and the, fir and the third field is online field and mm -hmm. uh, perfect education combines all three. Okay. So there is no good education only in school, only online, mm -hmm. only outside. You have to combine because uh, the basic knowledge, the first uh, touch with uh, some uh, topics uh, is at school. Yeah, so it's very important to do it at school. We have some books uh, we can learn from. Uh, then some content online, for example, videos to watch, podcasts to listen, maybe some hybrid exercises to make, some mm -hmm. uh, group work uh, after the lessons. It's very important. And the third field, uh, f it's called field trips. It's called, uh, I don't know, adventure learning. It's called also learning by doing. Okay. So you have some basic knowledge, some, some fundaments, and then you confront this knowledge with uh, real life, real action. And then you have the whole picture. So um, it's not like we uh, can replace the traditional learning, traditional education. We cannot, we can add something and okay. make this the complete experience do you do you see some um differences being born uh through the you know changes in the, the generations mm -hmm. uh in the in the in the context of uh, new media is is new generation like you know the the the, the newest like uh, 12 15 years old now mm -hmm. children uh, are very more prone to learning online or uh, is, is, it, is, 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 that, is that not, uh, not changing? Is that, uh, you know, constant that people need to have these three uh, uh, pillars that you, t uh, that you told about? Uh, you know, uh, for sure, the, uh, the last generations, the, the young ones, uh, are very, uh, keen and the technology is very natural to them. So mm -hmm. when we organize some 
uh, workshops uh, and we try to use some mobile apps, some com computer programs. Um, they are, you know, they are as fast as, <laughs> as the uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> so the <laughs> teachers uh, can follow uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, and we, we can see that I can see maybe that it's um, harder sometimes to, uh, you know, create this interest in going outside. Mm -hmm. They ask, uh, why can't we watch a movie? Is it sufficient to do it from the inside? But when we uh, break this wall, Okay. Uh, they are uh, very um, energetic. They mm. want to learn. They are uh, awesome. Uh, I uh, I don't think that these new generations are better or worse than the previous sure. ones. They are sure. different. They need we need different approach uh, to them. Maybe a little bit more work at the beginning, but, mm -hmm. but then when we you know create this connection uh, with them uh, during the, I don't know, third day of our trip, for example, they are, you know, perfect uh, to, okay. uh, to, to be the participants of the, of this uh, workshops. That's, that's also what you're saying, because I hate this narrative that, you know, the new generation is lazy or, uh, or bad, uh, because they are using, I don't know, cell phones more or something like that, but that that's just different world than, than 20 yeah. or 30 years. The ago, older so. generations say that, but they forget that when they were young, the previous generations told exactly. so, so it's, <laughs> it's interesting, such a goldfish memory. <laughs> yeah. 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 We were the lazy ones when we were 15 years yeah. old. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we were driving cars and uh, our, our yes. grandmothers used to say, why not walking? Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit and uh, I even uh, away back and uh, start at the beginning and start with you. Uh, how did it happen to you? How did you get this geology, geology bug that you have inside of you? Oh, it's... Uh... Probably the listeners and you, you expect some big story, <laughs> but there, there is no big story behind it. <laughs> uh, when I was in high school, uh, I completely didn't know uh, what I could do in the future. Mm. Uh, I was as, as, as all of us. <laughs> yeah, as all of us. I was interested in French language, so maybe some French studies. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, in my high school in Warsaw, there is a cultural week where when we invite the artists uh, to make concerts or um, meet with us, and we, uh, you know, we invite the people who finished the high school. So I met uh, a couple of my friends uh, who finished high school one year before. And uh, Janek and uh, uh, Tomek, they were like, dude, you have to go to the geology faculty of University of Warsaw. These are incredible studies. Uh, you will travel a lot. The other people are so friendly and, uh, you know, the professors, they, uh, they are, uh, you know, such, such good people. So I was like, yeah, I like geography. I uh, used to dream to be a archeologist uh, after mm -hmm. watching Indiana Jones movies. Sure, so sure. archeologist, <laughs> geologist. Uh, <laughs> It's quite similar. <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, yeah, I will try. So, okay. uh, so this is, this is the backstory, but you have to know that geology, mm, they are, uh, they are not, uh, uh, you know, typical and common uh, studies. Uh, as I, as I said, uh, the 20% of the um, topics of uh, the classes, uh, you spend them not, uh, in the building, uh, geology faculty, but uh, outside during the field trips. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's not for everyone because as you know, when it's rain, whether it's raining or not, whether it's hot uh, or not, you have to be outside because for okay. example, you rented some equipment and you have only 24 hours to use it. So mm. um, you have to do your, uh, do your job. Um, Geology. But it, 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 so, it sounds awesome for someone who likes that stuff, who yes. likes to stay outside and learn yes. by doing. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, after the first year of uh, the, the first degree, um, we participate in a, a three weeks uh, cor course. 
And after that, uh, I suppose that 30, 40% of students quit because they hmm. realize uh, it's not for them. It's not for them. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, you have to also know that uh, geology is a life science, which combines the knowledge from chemistry, physics, maths, uh, nature, mm -hmm. etc. So we have to be quite good uh, in all of those uh, topics, uh, especially from the beginning. So, uh, for example, someone likes geography and he's like, oh, I will be a geologist. Mm -hmm. But then at the university, they try to learn chemistry and it's like, oh, no, it's not for me. So you have to be quite good as in uh, a few uh, topics. Uh, so it's uh, there is uh, a saying uh, about geology that uh, it's quite easy to get into geology studies, but it's even easier to be kicked out of it. So, uh, yeah. So so this is <laughs> some introduction about geology. <laughs> but so maybe maybe you don't have you know the grand uh, origin story of your of your passion and your uh, work, but uh, what 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 made you stay stay in it? Did it all click? Everything what you said, did, did it all click with you or it was something else? Mm, because like I, you said, you didn't, you didn't uh, know that you want to do this, uh, especially, you know, f f for, uh, for work, for your life, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but you stayed in it, so it must have been something in it. Yeah, it, it, it is maybe interesting because at the high school I was in, you know, this humanistic profile, human mm -hmm. profile. So I learned about liter literature, about languages, about history, uh, not maths and chemistry and physics. Yeah. So it was like very hard uh, at the beginning of my s geological studies because uh, because I had to, you know, f follow up, follow up and ke keep up to the rest. Uh, but um, I, I liked also the geography. I liked being outside. I, I like traveling, uh, traveling mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, so uh, this is also important when you want to be a geologist. Uh, so, yeah, uh, at the university, I uh, I realized that I like it, and you have to know that in uh, 2013, 2015, 16, 2015, 16, um, it was like a very big uh, boom at uh, uh, hydrocarbonates, uh, uh, such. Uh, oil and gas. So I was okay. linking my future to it. Uh, mm -hmm. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't s such big uh, discussion about the protecting the environment, about uh, green sources of energy. So yeah. at, the, at the geology, uh, a lot of people wanted to work uh, with oil and gas. Uh, so was me. But uh, during my studies, I realized uh, there is no bright future for this field uh, because, you know, um, the resources, uh, uh, you know, are, s are smaller uh, year after year. Uh, we talk about the climate change. Uh, so the, the atmosphere is not good, uh, but I also um, enjoyed learning, uh, teaching our uh, other mm -hmm. people. Um, I was, you know, preparing uh, young people for their exams. Uh, I attended uh, winter and summer camps as a, a skiing instructor, for example. So <laughs> one day I thought I could combine, I could combine geology and uh, teaching our people so mm -hmm. uh, from from those two perspectives uh, the geo learning was born actually that's a quite awesome origin story <laughs> <laughs> maybe not the flashy the, you know explo explosive one but quite yeah. nice quite nice so skipping to the 2017 and uh, geo learning what was your main goal uh, the the teaching of the of the children or, or children or this and something else <sighs> My main goal was and is uh, implement the uh, learning by doing approach mm -hmm. because uh, I can see that uh, a lot of teachers, uh, they, they stay uh, at school. They are very glued to the mm -hmm. books and uh, this knowledge is uh, theoretical. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, when you read something, 
you will remember about 20% of it after, let's say, one year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you watch a video, you will uh, remember 40% maybe. When you play a video game about it, you will remember 60%. But when you will uh, be outside, touch the rock, for example, make a walk and understand some processes, you will understand 80-90%. So it's, mm. uh, uh, it's the best way to, uh, to learn. Uh, so this was our main, uh, main goal. Um, you have to... Now, if you are not from Poland, but uh, I think that the situation is quite similar all over the world. Uh, in uh, the uh, secondary school, in the middle school or high school, there is no such subject as geology. Uh, geology is packed into geography. Uh, in Polish high school, teachers have literally two lessons mm -hmm. during a four year education. Uh, to uh, teach uh, geology. So it's uh, 90 minutes. Uh, the teachers in high school have to teach geology for 90 minutes. Uh, it's not sufficient. So we know that and we expand this knowledge into a couple of days uh, field trips. Um, we also uh, teach uh, teachers and students how to use uh, online sources, uh, how to use uh, online programs, mm -hmm. how to use apps, uh, because when you are on your vacation, for example, uh, on your or or any trip, uh, you can learn uh, geology using uh, the free resources. Uh, but also, you know, uh, if you are after uh, participating our workshops, uh, you see some things which are uh, unseen uh, before. Uh, you notice something, so you are aware, uh, it's, and it's easier to mm -hmm. uh, to see better, to see more. Uh, why is this, uh, you know, laughable ninety minutes of geology uh, at school? Why isn't it enough? Or I put it in another way: Why is ge geology important? Geology, in my opinion, should be, you know, the the other subject at high school, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the, the other ones, from a couple of reasons. Uh, first, as I said, geology combines the all life sciences knowledge. So uh, if you imagine uh, maybe a tree, geology is in the center. Yeah. And then these are the branches like uh, chemistry, biology, physics, etc. Uh, this is the first reason. The second one is uh, we learn why we learn geology in, in general. You can you can pose that question. Why we learn geology? We learn geology because we believe that something if something happened uh, in the past, uh, the same processes can happen now mm -hmm. in the uh, current times and in the future. So, for example, when we talk about uh, climate crisis, yeah, uh, we have a lot of uh, scientists uh, who are dealing with this uh, problem. So they could ask a geologist and uh, they are like, uh, we can see that the temperature is rising. Uh, we know that the pace of this rising, uh, we can measure the uh, CO2 level in the atmosphere, the hydrogen level in the atmosphere. Uh, we can, uh, I don't know, we can measure the temperature of the uh, seawater and uh, geologists seek uh, for uh, the similar uh, environment in the past. Yeah, he can uh, attach and then he can see what happened next, uh, what uh, what was the con uh, consequences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now we can see that uh, uh, in a couple hundred, uh, maybe a couple thousand of years, uh, we can have uh, massive global extinction because in the past there was like five or maybe six global big extinctions when nearly 90-95% uh, of uh, species uh, died. Uh, so we can see that we are uh, entering the, the danger zone. Yeah, we can, we can help and we can uh, give our perspective. So the geology, 
I can say that geology is crucial uh, in this whole, uh, you know, talks about, uh, for example, uh, the global uh, climate uh, crisis okay. and change. So it's uh, understanding present and um, getting ready for the future by yes. studying the past. Yeah, it's like with history. Yeah, yeah. Um, we hate history sometimes and the students in school are like, yeah. oh, my God, history is only about remembering the dates and the names. Yeah. Yes. So why that we was, learn? That was, that was my history teacher. Yeah, uh, it's all in Wikipedia. So why to learn? Mm -hmm. I, I want mm -hmm. to see I can check online and that's all. But history is not about that. History is about, you know, um, learning from the past and uh, the perfect history teacher is someone who will uh, pose a problem and uh, try to find a solution uh, in the previous events yeah so okay. it's quite similar with geology mm, nice interesting uh, so going forward to the uh, geo learning your startup how does it work can you tell us more about it mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, our main uh, <laughs> revenue stream is to organize uh, workshops and uh, school trips for students uh, from primary, secondary and high school. So we can, you know, uh, adjust the uh, the knowledge and the, the hardness of the workshops to uh, to different uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have we, we want to uh, find the teachers who present this uh, idea of the trip uh, to their uh, class mm, and then we uh, and then we go with them to the most important uh, from geological perspective um, regions in poland now uh, it's holy cross mountains uh, as I said, it's also uh, Sudety, uh, second big uh, mountains in Poland. And we organize trips uh, by the sea uh, also to see the uh, quite younger pro processes. Uh, they last, the trips last a uh, few days. They can be one day or a few hours, but the best trips are three, four or five mm -hmm. days. Uh, so we provide uh, a place to sleep. Uh, we provide food, all the workshops, uh, the care uh, with the with the group. So for the teachers, it's quite comfortable because uh, when we talk with the teachers, they are like, "Oh my God, there is so much work at school. There is so much paperwork, yeah. and the." Uh, and the uh, parents and the students that are like, let's go out on a trip and then I don't have time. I don't have energy to organize. Sure. So uh, we have this complex approach for the teacher. It's only uh, to organize some transport, uh, go to us. But when they, uh, when they travel, uh, when they are uh, with us, uh, they, uh, they probably relax, they probably learn, and they are probably very uh, calm about yeah. this, uh, you know, um, this whole care we provide. Uh, are you able to, uh, to take the whole class, like 20, 30 kids? We are able, we are able to take uh, more than 100 uh, oh. youngsters uh, wow. uh, in one time because uh, geolearning is me, Przemek, my part, my business, business partner, Damian, and about 10 uh, co-workers who help us to run the workshops uh, to take care of the group. So we can organize, for example, a trip for 60 people and uh, there is like free um free people from us uh, from our crew so we can adjust um, we can adjust this to the size of the group um, some teachers prefer uh, quite uh, smaller groups mm -hmm. maybe one class uh, 20 something uh, students but the other groups are bigger uh, you know it's um, it's financial uh, financial benefits to create bigger groups because the, there sure. are some uh, spendings uh, that are fixed. So mm -hmm. the more people attend, uh, less money they pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I presume, like transportation, for example, or yes, catering, yes. something like that. Yeah. Yes. Mm, 
is it hard to convince uh, teachers and uh, especially uh, you know s uh, school councils and something like that uh, to gather uh, you know money and time for something like mm -hmm. that because like you said geology is not the uh, the separate uh, separate subject in schools so are they you know reluctant to do something like that for not uh, geography or history but geology it was harder at the beginning because people didn't know us mm -hmm. now we are quite a brand uh, among the uh, teachers um, you have to know uh, also that uh, first we uh, we obtained a lot of help from uh, the university of warsaw incubator we had this thing called pre-incubation so uh, now geolearning is a spin-off so the university of warsaw have some shares in our company mm -hmm. so uh, we can use this university of warsaw brand logo and we can say that we cooperate with university of warsaw which is quite important for the teachers uh, uh, so now it's now it's in easier i i suppose why, why, why is it important for the for the teachers because university of warsaw is a very strong educational brand in poland yeah so among a couple of uh, similar uh, initiatives uh, this is our unique value proposition that we are linked with the university we are linked with uh, s the biggest university in Poland one of the uh, maybe 500 best, best in the world so it it is quite important I think um, it's also easier when we say to the teachers we take care about them about the uh, students uh, so uh, the, organi the uh, organization of this trip is easier for them mm -hmm. uh, but as you said mm, geology so sometimes it's harder to sell uh, only geology uh, topics so it's important to um, mm, to communicate with the teachers saying that we combine the knowledge from uh, physics chem chemistry etc etc and we try to add this knowledge from other uh, life science topics and all combined is very attractive proposition and uh, the the teachers uh, it's uh, it's quite easy now to convince them okay. we have to adjust the length of the of the trip maybe some additional attractions to make the the price uh, uh, sufficient for for the group but but now I have to say that uh, it's not uh, as uh, hard as it was. Okay, so, so so what are the biggest challenges for you now, at at this point of uh, geo learning, uh, you know, mm -hmm. growth? They are some. Uh, <laughs> I can uh, I can talk with you about the black swans, but uh, they are rare. <laughs> uh, I think that the the biggest challenge now is like we are not a software startup uh, we 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 will create the online uh, online courses uh, online uh, workshops mm -hmm. but it won't be the core of our business our core business is to be present physically so um, we we can't uh, f we cannot scale up as fast as other startups the, oh, okay. because maybe mm, created cre we create uh, a growth i can estimate between 50 100 percent year per year uh, for us it's is very uh, uh, big growth mm -hmm. but probably uh, when some programmist or uh, online engineer uh, will listen to this podcast they are like oh my god the big growth is like ten thousand percent year per year yeah this is th the disruption i am looking for not 50 percent <laughs> yeah so uh, so it, this this is hard uh, also as i said we we are uh, a startup without any investors from the beginning we mm -hmm. We are still bootstrapping our company, so we still invest our profits into okay. the growth. Uh, 
so you know that the, that these are pros and cons uh, having an investor or taking some loan from the bank yeah because the sure. money money helps and you can expand faster uh, but on the other hand, we are also 100%, oh, not 100%, uh, between 80-90% independent uh, because there is a, uh, right. these are shares from the university, but uh, we are very independent. We can make our own business decisions. Uh, these decisions uh, often are not like uh, we will expand fast as the, and this decision will boost us, but these are the decisions we want to invest now and uh, it will, we will make more profit in maybe two or three years. Mm -hmm. So it's a bigger uh, and longer perspective, but I am a geologist, so I have a million <laughs> years perspective <laughs> and two or three years it's are nothing. not long for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's, even a tick on a... It's, uh, it's on quite a, a second, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like you said, money is important, but maybe I, I hate this uh, big corporate narrative that you have to grow, grow, grow and only grow. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in your case, uh, some smaller scale is enough and you will be able to do your thing and teach, teach children and, you know, uh, uh, see some, you know, passion about geology. And maybe that's enough. Maybe you don't have to be, you know, worldwide corporation mm -hmm. or something like that. We we probably want to be worldwide. Uh, we have such plans to uh, invite uh, students from other countries and we have plans to, to travel with Polish mm. students uh, abroad. Um, we think about, uh, you know, this uh, internationalization of our business, but we know that uh, it won't be as fast as in other companies uh, because uh, when you are uh, an online app, uh, mainly it's about create the um, English version of our uh, application, uh, check out the legislation in other country if we don't violate some rules uh, and maybe uh, link some pay systems to, to the you know, other currencies. And mm. uh, maybe uh, it's too simple what I said, but mainly it's about that. Uh, for mm -hmm. us, it's about build a whole new structure, whole new mm, proposition. And uh, if we, you know, if we add maybe five people to our team, we will be able to uh, organize 20% more trips. Yes, when you are an uh, online startup, adding five people uh, can expand your profits uh, in a couple thousand of uh, per percent. Yeah, it's it's other uh, it's other perspective, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we are very comfortable with with that uh, growth. Uh, and uh, if in the <laughs> if in the future there won't be uh, such pandemic as uh, the last one when for one year and a half we will be frozen, uh, I'm very uh, I have very bright uh, bright thoughts about the future. Okay, great. Mm. You uh, you have an, uh, a d degree in applied geology from the University of Warsaw. Yeah. You al you also have your own podcast, uh, Przekuć Success. Uh, you are a very passionate guy. Uh, it's it's obvious. <laughs> Thanks. You, you, you like what you do. You you speak very interestingly about it, and it, it's 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 obvious that you are a passionate guy. Uh, how can you do that? How can you uh, make um, children passionate about some topic that they don't know or uh, yet or uh, is boring for them or etc etc how can you make mm -hmm. children passionate about education few things uh, first one is gamification i know that uh, gamification is a perfect way to make everything interesting <laughs> um, and when we organize our uh, trips um, and during the workshops uh, yeah we try to um, invite them into the competition. Uh, sometimes they can gain some points. Sometimes there is a race about something who will win, who, who will be the best. Um, the whole trip we created into one uh, gamification experience. So um, at the end, uh, they 
mainly works uh, in groups so at the end they can uh, they can learn which group was the best so gamification is the is the first uh, is the first one the second one is the language because we try to keep the language as simple as possible um, when we try to use some uh, scientific hard uh, names we explain uh, i noticed that at the university uh, the more the hard uh, words you use mm -hmm. uh, the smarter guy you <laughs> seem to be uh, for me it's uh, completely the opposite approach the more simple words you use and the simpler way you choose to explain something mm -hmm. the better scientist you are mm -hmm. so uh, i love andrzej dragan it's a polish uh, polish uh, physicist and once he said that when the professor use uh, very hard and uh, uh, difficult uh, terms uh, he probably don't know what is he talking about <laughs> so so this is very simple very simple language and uh, and what is what is more uh, we try to highlight this very hardly that this knowledge can be used in the future that this is not only the knowledge theoretically mm. knowledge uh, which will stay in their minds to be mr curiosity at the party in the future no uh, this is uh, this is the knowledge which can which can be applied in the future uh, whether they will work in the industry uh, or i don't know in a corporation or in the startup uh, this knowledge is uh, this knowledge is useful and will be useful so maybe these uh, main three uh, arguments about okay. uh, interesting uh, interesting trip that's great that's great um uh, speaking about the future you were t you were saying before that uh, you would like to expand to other countries mm -hmm. is there a place like a sacred place for the uh, geologist uh, there, there is, there are many, but uh, f f firstly, we will um, probably stay in the Europe. Uh, Morocco is the great place uh, for everyone who loves geology and uh, fossils. So this is our first uh, main goal to travel to Morocco with our team and maybe Great Britain. Uh, this is also a very interesting place, uh, beautiful mountains, uh, and you can explain a lot of uh, geological processes uh, being there. Mm -hmm. There was also Ukraine, because Ukraine is a country where we have uh, a lot of sedimentary rocks and um, beautiful uh, quarries, uh, for example, so that trip to Ukraine would be lovely. But now uh, we uh, wait um, until Ukraine will win and uh, um, Russia so aggressor win, st will step back and then uh, we will uh, join uh, Ukraine as fast as possible. Let's hope that uh, it's going to be sooner than later. Yeah. Um, what makes a place an interesting, like you said, place for ge geologists? Mm. Uh, you know that uh, in the geology there is a rule that the older rocks are under the newer rocks. So this is this is this very important, very simple and important rule. Uh, so uh, typically when we want to uh, learn uh, from the rocks, uh, for example, made three, uh, 300 million years ago, um, we would have to dig very uh, deeply, uh, quite a uh, few kilometers uh, mm -hmm. under the ground. But the, uh, these are some places in the world uh, where uh, with some uh, tectonic help, uh, these old rocks uh, are uh, at the surface and we can ex examine them uh, and learn from them uh, on the surface. 
uh, so for example holy cross mountains are such a region we have such regions in uh, germany great britain uh, in europe uh, australia china vietnam for example and united mm. states uh, all over the world uh, so uh, so this is very important these are also places with uh, unique minerals uh, and unique fossils uh, for for the scientists so these are also very interesting inter interesting ones okay great it sounds like you can be a successful and happy geologist all over the world <laughs> you don't have to stick to one country <laughs> yeah yeah i think that geologists uh, these are uh, the scientists uh, with very big passion to cooperate and mm. in the field of geology the conferences uh, are uh, in in the conferences you can um, you can meet the geologists from all over the world mm. the uh, faculties uh, geology faculties from all over the world the, they cooperate uh, very often in warsaw we cooperate for example with the university of vietnam uh, so the geologists uh, are very passionate uh, and they want to cooperate Mm, so even there is a geological union to unify the names so for example mm -hmm. when we have some uh, names uh, which are used differently in uh, in different countries they are like no we have to unify when we have to came up with one name which will be uh, used worldwide so from year after year uh, we can communicate even better that's great that sounds like a good atmosphere to work in Yes. Uh, yes. Lastly, I have two questions about um, your business. Um, first of all, is, uh, of them is, what is your managing style? How do you manage your business? <laughs> uh, you know, this is uh, quite awesome that me and my uh, business partner Damian, uh, we are like Yin and Yang. Uh, I have this. Uh, uh, lean uh, approach so i love uh, mvps i love demos i want to show uh, everything to the world as fast as possible and damian is like a very perfection uh, guy <laughs> he's a perfectionist so he's like no this is not ready yet we have to you know work uh, work on this for quite longer time so we try to uh, Meet find the middle yes find this middle and uh, we we manage uh, i my managing style hmm, probably it's about trust i believe that we have to trust our partners and uh, co-workers this is not a problem for me to uh, you know uh, maybe let the workers make their own decisions Mm, even there is a mm, you know financial level so up to xxx uh, zwote or dollars you can make this decision without me it's mm -hmm. your decision okay. uh, whether there, this will be a good or bad decision when it will be good it's good for us mm -hmm. uh, when it will be bad uh, we will learn from this bad decision uh, so it's not a it's not a problem for me uh, so it's about trust and it's about uh, uh, communicating very often and asking whether we can improve whether you are uh, satisfied with your job uh, so we know we make mistakes and uh, my managing style it's not uh, that uh, everything we do is great and when it's bad we will make a PR that it was great mm -hmm. uh, we can admit we make mistakes better or uh, worse uh, decisions but uh, we try to learn and we are quite good uh, in learning from the failures mm -hmm. uh, so yeah maybe 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 something like that does does it work does it pay off I, I i bet it does but i have to ask you uh this trust approach i i bet it has like um uh like uh i don't know uh an action reaction maybe mm -hmm. uh, consequence when you trust people they trust you is that is, am i right or 
and uh, I can uh, for one more time uh, present myself as a geologist. So in a shorter perspective, maybe not, because for example, from the bad decisions we learn, but we also, uh, we also spend money. So sure. maybe financially, it's not always the, uh, a good decision, but in the longer perspective, this trust approach is uh, the best in my opinion, because let's imagine there is a conflict in our team two people don't like each other and uh, there is no trust atmosphere in the company so they are like hidden with their uh, <laughs> arguments and uh, in a shorter perspective uh, maybe it's better because they uh, they are not presenting it to uh, to everyone there are they are not ruining the atmosphere uh, but in the longer perspective, it will, um, you know, it will be burst. So uh, it will explode. And then the consequences can be uh, quite uh, big. And this trust uh, approach is like, uh, maybe let's clean it up as fast as possible to, uh, you know, uh, to be as agile as we can, you know, to to learn from failures as fast as okay. we can. I get a feeling that there's a uh, there's a, a bit of philosophy that you can learn from uh, this <laughs> geological approach of mm -hmm. uh, looking at everything at the scales of millions of years and not thousands or hundreds. You know, Sheldon Cooper used to say that uh, geology is Kardashians of science. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm very proud uh, <laughs> that we are Kardashians of science. Yes, you can learn from geology. And uh, I, I have this feeling that uh, we can all, as a society, we can all learn from science. And uh, we have this situation, uh, for example, in Poland, when people don't understand why we have the universities, why mm -hmm. we spend public money to mm -hmm. universities uh daily we are not connecting to the scientists we don't know which knowledge they produce uh, so it's very important to build those links from the science and universities to the society mm -hmm. to show that uh, the the studies they make they matter uh, so apply this knowledge you know for for everyone for the society and uh, we can uh, relate to the pandemic yeah uh, we in my opinion as a world uh, we dealt with the pandemic quite fast because uh, first lockdowns it was january february 2020 and after three three uh, years and a half the who announced that the pandemic is over so uh, it was very short time to you know invent the uh, vaccine yeah. to implement it uh, for the people to stop the pandemic and it's all uh, thanks to the science thanks to the scientists thanks to the universities uh, so we have to be grateful and we have to uh, reconnect with uh, the science uh, one more time i think people underestimated the fact that uh, two years uh, uh, for dealing with a global problem of yes. this scale and this magnitude is really short time <laughs> yes <laughs> to, to get from, not... from, from you know the panic of the first months of the pandemic to the end or so-called end of the pandemic uh, that's awesome two years it's really yeah. nothing yeah and uh we have to be grateful yeah so my last question is uh, a favor actually i wanted to ask you for uh, you for an advice for other startups what what advice hmm. can you give to other startups maybe just starting their uh their idea oh they could be few but uh, if i could had highlight one i would say you have to be very persistent and patient because uh, in in the life of every person, not only the startupper, mm, they are there are better and uh, worse times, uh, crisis, crises. Uh, so you can give up in 
so many steps and a lot of people give up after, I don't know, a month, a sink, six months, a year, etc., etc. But if you feel that you can succeed with your project, you feel that your product, your service is good, you feel that you will be able to solve the real problem uh, and help people, don't give up. And maybe after a few years you will succeed. Maybe you will have to pivot your idea uh, a couple of times. Uh, that's okay. You will mm, make a lot of bad decisions. Mm, maybe there will be times you will be nearly out of money. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, people who succeed, these are the people who didn't give up. Uh, so be persistent. And if you believe uh, in your idea, one day it will pay off. That's great. Thanks a lot, Przemek. If you have anything else to add, that's the time for that. I don't know. I'm, I'm quite uh, happy that we succeeded sacrificed such a big amount of time to geology <laughs> uh, so maybe it wasn't a strictly strictly a business podcast but i hope you enjoyed this, that that conversation mm, you can uh, reach me uh, anytime uh, in my social media for example facebook instagram twitter etc etc linkedin uh, so i am available uh, to to talk to uh, respond to all the questions and uh, Shimon, I am very uh, happy and very delighted to be your guest. Uh, thanks for an invitation and thanks for your time. So guys, these were uh, the Startup Stories, our uh, newest episode. If you liked it, follow us uh, on YouTube or any other podcast uh, uh, site or app you, you use. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.